Resurrection Sunday. And all the people of God said, the Christ of glory, the Christ of glory is, the is the risen Savior. Now shake somebody's hand before you sit down and just let them know it's so good to see him in the house of God. Amen. It's a blessing to be in the house of God. Thank you. Well, we bless him, we honor him, we adore him. 
and we're reminded, amen, that there's nothing, nothing can't do it. Nothing too hard for you. Amen. But let's go right into the word of God. Amen. Let's look, amen, at John the 11th chapter. John the 11th chapter. You know, when those women, the three Marys went into the tomb, amen, they went in that tomb because they recognized and they needed to know, amen, concerning what the prophet said. And Jesus had already proclaimed that he would come, amen, back as the resurrected Savior. But how many people today understand that whatever Jesus said is forever settled in heaven? That what he does, amen, it shall be done. Yes. What he decreed will come to pass. Yes. And so I just want to start here because I just want to remind you of something that Jesus did, which was a preview. Everybody say preview. Preview. And sometimes, you know, right before you, if you, I don't know, it's been a long time since I've been to a movie theater, but I used to like to always get there in time to see the trailers. Because the trailers would let you know what's coming to the theater and what movie is coming next and all of that. And, and so, and then they give you a little preview. They don't give you everything, but they give you just a little preview. Well, I, I just want you to take a look at this for a minute, and then we're going to go back to Matthew, the 20th chapter. But here in St. John, if you're there, the 11th chapter, and I want you to see what Jesus said concerning the preview of what was going to be taking place. And so, amen, John, 11th chapter, and let's look at the 21st verse. When you're there, say, I am there. St. John 11 and 21. And you, can, you can stand and read with me for a few, a few scriptures, two verses here. Everybody have it? Say, I'm there. Yeah. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. And Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And something very profound that we need to hear and understand. Jesus said to her, I am what? I, he is what? So we're talking about resurrection Sunday, but Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believe thou this look at somebody said do you believe that amen amen do you believe that you may have your seat as i was studying for today's message it, it became really clear to me that the Lord always has a way of giving you a heads up. That's why the prophets, amen, would prophesy. See, prophecy is not to scare us, but to prepare us. Amen. And even then, he wanted them to understand, I am. Now, he knew he was going to be resurrected. But it's so awesome to me that he says that I am the resurrection. It's one thing to be resurrected. But it's a whole different thing when you say, I am. And every time Jesus said, I am, something happened anyway. Because he is God, amen, in flesh. So now, let's go over to Matthew, and let's take a look. Oh, no, let's go to St. Luke, and let's look at the first chapter of St. Luke. And we just want to stop by here and lay down this foundation concerning the things that were going to be happening. You know, anytime God does anything, in time, there's an event that takes place in the supernatural realm. People don't always understand. And even though disciples were groomed by him and trained by him, taught by him, uh, showed them an example of who he was, yet still many of them did not understand the full proof of his word. And so when we see what happens next, there's something that 
we should take for our own application and always remember that whatever Jesus said he's going to do, his word is forever settled in heaven. Amen. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices, which they had prepared, and certain others with them. So after, okay, so we know, oh, I'm sorry, Luke 24 and 1. I thought I gave y'all that. Luke 24 and 1. Amen. And, and so they, they came and they bought spices. In other words, they were being prepared to anoint the body of a dead savior. I'm gonna say it again. They came prepared to anoint the body of a dead savior. And, and the problem with that is that their faith obviously was not activated at this time. And so many times you can have a, a little bit of an understanding of something and miss the whole point of something. Amen. I'm going to say it again. You can have a little bit of an understanding of something, but miss the whole point of why did Jesus die? Why was he at, on, on that hill far away that stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of sin and shame? Amen. What was about that old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary? And so here they, they're, they're seeing the, the narrative, they're seeing these events played out, and yet they're missing. Have you ever watched a movie and you couldn't wait to get to? <laughs> and, and that's how it is. They're, they're, they're there, they're, they see some of what's going on, but they're missing. And I know sometimes we anticipate things. Uh, I, you know, I'm a person that loves mysteries. I, I love mysteries because I like to try to find out who done it, the who done it, you know or who did it or what, and, and, and here, the, Jesus made it plain. They didn't even have to guess this thing, they only had to believe and remember. Well, they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. I'm gonna ask you a question. Who rolled away the stone, y'all? Who rolled away the stone? Because Roman, the Roman government, anytime they put a stone somewhere, they put a Roman seal, Pax Romana. In other words, under the authority of the Roman government, Pax Romana. And so the seal was on the stone. That meant, far as governance go, that nobody had the authority to roll away that stone. And the stone was weighed over 2,000 pounds on top of that. But there's authority that's greater than Pilate. There's an a, a, a authority greater than Caesar. Yeah. That there was authority greater than Pharaoh and all the kings of the earth. Yeah. And that authority came from heaven. Yeah. And so the angels of God, yeah. with the divine mandate of God, came and they rolled away the stone from the sepulcher mm -hmm. or the tomb. They entered in and found not the body of Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood, in, stood by them in shining garments. In other words, there were angels, amen, standing and with the glory of God on their garments, the Shekinah glory, the presence, amen. And as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living? Somebody say, the living, the living. risen, risen. Savior. Savior. So why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, Hallelujah. but he is risen. Yeah. And then he goes on and say, now remember, remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee saying the Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And then they remember the words. Sometimes, amen, there has to, something has to take place to cause you to remember. Uh, a lot of times uh, we have short memories. 
Especially if you've been under stress. Especially if you've been concerned about a situation. And yet the angels reminded them of the words that Jesus spoke. And they returned from the sepulcher and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, mm -hmm. Johanna, and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Yes, yes. Their words seemed to be as idle tales and they believed them not. You know, when miracles happen, a lot of people will, now unless you, unless you have scientific, if you're that type of person, and that's your, you know, the, your um, ideology. That's your philosophy. Uh, some people, they, they won't believe nothing. Uh, like old folks say, they don't believe fat meat is greasy. Mm -hmm. if you, amen. There's some folks that just ain't gonna believe nothing. They don't care how you, and yet, they of all people should have remembered what the Lord said and should have believed. Amen. But nevertheless, because they thought, well, I guess we'll just go and take a look. And arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher. <laughs> Amen. He ran to the sepulcher, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes. They were laid by themselves and departed, wondering himself at that which was come to pass. Amen. In other words, Peter began to, rem to suppose. Now, remember, John ran before him. Uh, Matthew tells us John ran before him the beloved one. And when John ran, but, but he got to the sepulcher and he didn't go in because out of honor and respect for the elder, he waited. But Peter, when he got there, he went in and he checked everything out. And he realized that indeed Christ had risen. Now, let's go to First um, First Corinthians. Now, when Anytime we see where the Lord does anything, it's recorded for our, not only for our learning, but our understanding. And so in, I want us to go to 1 Peter right quick. I want you to see something. No, I'm sorry. Before we go to 1 Peter, let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, because I want to lay this out. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. So important that we understand that when the Lord uh, rose, that he didn't just rise, amen, for himself. He rose for us. Is that right? Amen. He, come on, say again. He rose amen. for me. He rose for me. And he rose for you. Rose for you. Amen. Because there's something that happens in that there's a change. There's a there, you know, for one thing, we know that even time was gonna take a change. It, it was gonna be from now on, BC and AD. So even time, the time would even change. But uh, the first Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the fourth verse, the Apostle Paul records this to the church at Corinth. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory. Yeah. See, it's one thing to hear the word, you got to apply the word, and you got to commit it to your memory. Why is it so important to commit it to the memory? So that you can pull it out. There's some things, listen, if you don't, if you don't put a uh, commit it to your memory, when the thing goes down or when things start manifesting, you will not be able to equate the two things. Right. And so when you put it in your memory, when you download it into your spirit realm, not just your soulless realm, because the soul is, we know, the seat of the will and the intellect and emotion. But when you download it, even when it gets into your spirit, it's never going to leave. It becomes a part, amen, it becomes a part of your, from then, from then on, from what you think about, what you do, how you explain things to others. It changes your worldview, amen. It changes your divine purpose. It'll even change the trajectory of your life when you download it, amen. And so they remember. He, re he tells them, remember, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. What? He died for our sins. What? According to the scriptures. Amen. So, so Paul is taking the time to remind the, ch the church at Corinth, 
I don't want you to forget this is very important. There's some things that you cannot afford to forget. You cannot forget when Jesus uh, died on the cross and when he said, at the day you gave your life to Jesus. If I ask everyone here, somebody should be able to tell me when they gave their life to Jesus. There's some things that I will never forget. That's why I love that song, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Amen. And, and now look at the fourth verse. It said, and that he was buried. He was what? Buried. Not only what did he die for, I said he was buried. And that he rose again the third day, what? According to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Peter. Cephas is in the, in the Greek, uh, his Greek name. Then of the 12. And after that, he was seen of about, of over 500 brethren at once. Now, that's a lot of witnesses, if you ask me. Oh, with five, over 500 people declaring and decreeing that they did not have the social media like we have today. But 500 people that saw him, the word spread like wildfire. And then look what it says. Of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are falling asleep. In other words, amen, because when, that, when Jesus died, there was an earthquake. And guess what happened? Many bodies came out of the ground and were raised. Can you just imagine that? But the earthquake was so mighty and the power of God was so mighty. The resurrection power was, of God was so mighty. It raised up those people that were in the graveyards. And they walked around those 500 and shared, amen, the news of what they had seen. After that, he was seen of James and then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen by me also as of one born out of time. On that Damascus road, he made his acquaintance with his Lord and Savior. Amen. For he said, I am the least of the apostles. I'm not even meet to become an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. You, listen, he died for you, and you are peculiar, you are unique, there's nobody got your fingerprints, there's nobody got your eyes, your iris, amen, nobody has your particular color, amen, there is everything about us is unique, uniquely designed by the master, amen, but Paul said, but I am, what I am, y'all did all of that, yes, I, it's true, but by the grace of God, and we're saying by grace through faith, it is the gift of God, not of works, as anybody should boast. Yes. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than all, yet not I, but God's grace, the grace of God, which was with me. Now, therefore, whether it were I or they, or so we preach, and so you believed. You believed what you heard. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? The devil is a lie because we know unassuredly, unapologetically that Jesus Christ was, was, not only was he crucified, but then he was raised up from the dead. Yes. Amen. Amen. So what did he say? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain. And your faith also is in vain. But we know that Christ did rise. Look at the 16th verse, our 7th, 15th verse. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Yet you are in, you are still in your sins. But we know that Christ is risen. Look at the 20th verse. But now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of those that sleep. Now, somebody might say, well, yeah, but what about all those people that Jesus raised up? The little girl, the 12 year old. Yeah, but they died again. What about Lazarus? He was, that was a preview. Remember I talked about the preview? That was just to show you because it wasn't going to be very much longer that Jesus himself was going to die on a cross. Amen. Be buried. Amen. And, and I, want, I, I can't wait to share this part with you. Something that happened that was so unique. 
Because when he went down, he went way down. And he preached to the spirits in hell. So let's go to the book of Romans. Amen. Amen. Romans, the eighth chapter. But God always wants you to be aware of what he did for your sins and for mine. You will never see the inside of hell. You will never, ever find yourself burning in fire and brimstone because hell is hot, y'all. Yes. There's gnashing of teeth. But Jesus paid it all. You couldn't fulfill all the law, but who paid it all? Jesus paid it all. So let's go and let's take a look at this in Romans, the, the, eighth, the eighth chapter. When you're there, say, I'm there. Look at the ninth verse. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, guess what? He's none of his. But if, the, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. But if the spirit of him, now listen to this real clearly. Get this, get this. Use your yellow marker. Make a note. This is so important for you to understand what he says here. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, guess what? He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also do what? Quicken your body, mortal body. Amen. By his spirit that dwelleth in you. Make you alive. Bring you back. Amen. If the spirit of Christ be in you and dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. That means we're going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Whether it's by rapture or whether, amen, we go all the way through the, the, the way of all men. But look what he said. Amen. But if the spirit that raised up Christ dwell in you, it's going to also quicken your mortal body. So mortality is going to put on immortality. Corruption is going to put on incorruption. Is that right? So he wants you to understand that, amen, without a shadow of a doubt, that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Somebody say, Christ in me, Christ in me. Is, the is the hope of glory. So let's go to 1 Peter. Amen. This resurrection power, this thing that God did, amen, for us, not only did it forever change us, or change our, our worldview or your biblical worldview, your whatever. Some people were just religious. But when they really, because the Jews were religious, but when they really found out who Jesus Christ was, it changed their whole biblical worldview and perspective. Yes. And God wants you to know that, amen, because of what he did for your sins and for mine, yes. they have been eternally blotted out. Amen. And that even if you would leave here today, you see, it, it you really when you look at it like this, let me put it like this. You can never die. You may, remember when Jesus told Martha, even though he died, even though he may be dead, he will live again. And so you go from life, somebody say this with me, we go from life to life. Now we use that word death or, or sleep or transition or, or whatever. But actually you go from this life because you, you went to be absent from the is to be where? Present with the Lord. Amen. Present with the Lord. So 1 Peter, when you're there, say I'm there. The first verse, first chapter. And look at the 18th verse. Amen. 1 Peter, first chapter, 18 verse. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. Amen. As silver, gold, from your vain conversation received by the traditions of your father. But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb, because he was a lamb, what? Without blemish and without spot, who barely was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you. And so when Jesus explains to them, amen, look, let's keep on reading, who by him do believe in God that raised him up, where? From the dead. He was raised up, amen. He was hung up for your hang-ups, but guess what? Then he was raised up for your deliverance, your healing, your peace, your joy, your, everything that you need, amen, because of what Jesus did. 
You're alive, even this day, because of what Christ did. Nobody did it but Jesus. So look what it said there. Raised him up from the dead and gave him what? Glory. Gave him what? Glory. That's why our topic today is the Christ, the glory of the resurrection. Gave him the glory that your faith and hope might be in where? In him. It's in him we what? Live. And do what? Move. And what? Have our... So that resurrection power, that same, and it's going to be so amazing, so amazing, so amazing when you, amen. Can you just imagine slipping out of this mortal, this little tabernacle, this little earth suit, yeah. and going into eternity? I, you know, I think about my sister Mary. I, I know that after seeing Jesus, she's going to see her, my mama. Mm -hmm. I know she's going to go right to, we're, and I don't know my brothers and sisters, they didn't say, when I was growing up, has anybody, is anybody from the South? Because one of, I, you know, the Lord reminded me uh, a few days ago, I was thinking about Mary and how Mary never called my mother they, and Ruby and Patrick and Oscar, my older brothers and sisters. They called my mother Mo. Anybody ever heard that? Mo. And the Lord reminded me, he said, remember when y'all were growing up, Mary and Ruby would call, because I was talking to the Lord about how I know Mary wanted to go see mama. And, and then he said, remember how Mary used to call your mother Mo? And that's what they called her, Mo. I, I, I know I know some people say Medea, you know, they got different names, Nana, but amen. But Mary called my mother, and, and all of them did, all of the older brothers and sisters. So you're going to see your loved ones again. Why? Because of the resurrection. Amen. You're going to be changed forever, and you are changed. Now let's keep on reading. Amen. Let's go, amen, to where do I want to go next? Philippians. Amen. Let's go to the book of Philippians. See, the, the, the thing that we go through in this life is but for a moment. Paul said our, that this thing that we go through is only for a moment. The tribulation that you've gone through is only for a moment. All the, the hurt that you go through is only for a moment. But God is going to give you eternal life. So whatever you go through, Look at somebody say, it's just for a moment. It's just for a moment. Amen. This too will pass. Somebody say, this too will pass. Because we get so caught up in what we're going through. Sometimes, amen, you feel like throwing in the towel, quitting God, quitting the church, quitting your ministry, quitting your marriage, quitting your job, what you want. But listen, it's just for a moment. Our light affliction, just for a moment. But they work for us a far more eternal, amen, weight of glory. Philippians 3. When you're there, say I'm there. And we're going to start at the ninth verse. Amen. I am so glad. I just can imagine the glory of the resurrection. When all of them, especially Thomas. But let's look at three and nine. And be found in him. Paul is talking about his relationship with the Lord, isn't he? Remember Paul said that he was the chief of pre of of sinners. Yeah. He was a hit man against the church. Mm -hmm. Paul was so dogmatic and legalistic mm -hmm. nobody was going to witness to Paul and get Paul saved because he'd try to kill you if you did. Right. Jesus had to save Paul. Mm -hmm. yeah. On, or he was Saul at that time because really there's some people that I, I, I know we all got kid folk that's kind of hard to amen convince that you know giving your life to the Lord is the best thing that you can do for them. Sharing the gospel and the good news is the best thing that you can do for them. But sometimes, amen, it takes God's right. intervention. How many amen. believe that? Amen. It takes God himself. And there are people today that will tell you, if God, God is the one that saved me. If didn't nobody witness to me, I was in a cell doing 40 years because I shot three folks, whatever, whatever. Amen. Well, Paul was such a man. And so, but remember, Paul was a religious hit man. And it's funny when you think about Paul was a religious hitman. So let's go up a little bit before we fit, go back down to the ninth verse. Because I want you to see Paul's resume. The fifth verse said this. He was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. So he claimed his Abrianic roots. He claimed his tribal roots. He was from the stock of Israel, but the tribe of Benjamin. He said, it's touching my religious ideology. 
He was a Pharisee. The Pharisees were unique because they believed in what? Angels and the resurrection. Yeah. They believed that there would be a They just didn't believe that Jesus was the one. Amen. 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 So they had their little, you know, they didn't have their little legal stuff going, and that was what was blocking them, their eyes from seeing. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they were stuck in the law of Moses. Yeah. But Paul said, but these things were gained to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Those I kind of lost for Christ. What things that seem to have prospered my, my, my uh, let's say, uh, you know how sometimes people want to be a socialite and mm -hmm. they want to be recognized in their community mm -hmm. and they want people to speak well. Well, Paul said he all of that that he thought he had going for him, he said, I, I kind of lost for the excellency of the knowledge Hallelujah. of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I've suffered. Yeah. He said, I've suffered the loss of all that. Many of the afflictions of the righteous. God deliver me. Amen. And Paul said, if you suffer with Christ, 2 Timothy 2.15, if you suffer with him, you'll reign with him. So he said, I suffered the loss of all things, and I count them but rubbish or dumb that I may win Christ and be found in him. We're back to that ninth verse. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith. For the just shall live by what? Faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. There's something about your faith. Your faith gives you the ability to not only stand on God's word, but allow the word of God to work in you. I told somebody years ago, the Holy Spirit dropped this in my spirit. It's one thing for you to know the word, but it's another thing for the word to know who you are. To know you. Remember the, those, those seven sons of Sceva that were trying to cast the devil out and, and, uh, and, and uh, those demons. Right. And those demons said, well, wait a minute, we, we know Jesus and, and we know Paul, but who are you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so it's one thing for you to know the law but, or know the word, but it's a wonderful thing for the word because in the beginning was the word when the word knows you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. glory. Do you know the word and does the word know you? Right. Amen. Not having, look, Paul said, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, because we're no longer mm -hmm. under the law. Yes. Jesus fulfilled what? The law. the law. We are now the righteousness of God through faith, mm -hmm. and Jesus, he paid it all. He was the ransom for our sins. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Jesus done it. Yes. And it's a done deal. Is that right? Amen. Yes. By it, look, look what he said. And that I may know him, that word is gnosko. Mm -hmm. It's a Greek word meaning, amen, to know someone intimately. Mm -hmm. It's the same word husbands and wives have. Gnosko, to know intimately. Mm -hmm. That I may know him and the power mm -hmm. of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Of his what? Resurrection. Amen. The power, this power behind, amen, the resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto the death. So Paul was saying, I have a koinonia with God. I have a relationship with God. I have an intimacy with God. He knows me. I know him. Somebody asked me the other day, well, do you know so-and-so? I said, I've seen him and I've heard him, but I don't know him. See, sometimes people see you. They know you. They can identify you. Oh, oh, that's Bruce. Yeah, they, they, he go to Agape. He wanna, yeah, I know Bruce. But they really do. They really know you. They know of you. And a lot of people, unfortunately, they know of him. Historic historians know or heard of Jesus, but do they really know Jesus? Some say, well, who's uh, he's a good teacher. He was a philosopher. Well, they said that he was a a, a wonder worker, but we don't really know. They didn't really know him. But guess what? Jesus asked him that question, who do men say that I am? But he didn't leave it there. He said, who do you now say that I am? Yes. And so here Paul is admitting, I, I, I want to get to know him better. Hallelujah. Do you want to know him better, y'all? Somebody say, Lord, I want to know you better. Hallelujah. Come on and say it again. Lord, I want to know you better. Because see, the more you know him, the closer you are to him. Then when situations come, you know that he keeps his word. His word is forever settled in heaven. 
He watches over his word concerning you because he knows you. He said he knows your uprising. Yes. He knows your down city. He knows you're going in. He knows you're coming out. Thank he knows God. what you're subject to. Because God knows you so much, he'll know, okay, I better, I got to bless him right now because next week something about to go down and I know she going to want to run away. That gypsy spirit going to come up on her and she going to say, I'm getting the hell out of here. So before, so then what does God do? He'll bless you in advance. He'll give you something to hold on to. He'll hold you close to him because he knows you're the way you take. That's what Job said, didn't he? Yeah. Job said, I know he knows the way. In other words, Job was saying, God knows what I'm doing. But my, 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 my wife, she just told me to curse God today. But Job said, I know my redeemer living. Yes. He said, what? I know my what? Redeemer living. So Job wasn't, uh, he he was saying, no matter what I'm going through, I know my Redeemer liveth, and I'm going to see him one day face to face. Yes. Amen. After I've been tried, I shall come forth as pure gold. pure gold. Why? Because he had a relationship that he could count on. Can you count on that relationship? Do you know that he'll bring you out? He'll bring you up over and through. Do you know him as a healer? I, I, I knew that he was going to keep his word. I knew that I was going to walk again. I, I knew that I was going to get over cancer. I knew it because why? Hallelujah. I'm not because I know him as Jehovah Jireh. I know him as Jehovah Rapper. I know him as Jehovah Rohi, my shepherd. I know him as Jehovah Shalom. I know and he gave me his peace. Why? Because I knew him. And it's in him we, we move and, and we live. And we have our be and so here, Paul, and you can play because we're getting ready to close out. But look what he says here, and I love this. Mm -hmm. He said that I may know him. Mm -hmm. Have that fellowship. And not just fellowship in the good days. Yes. Fellowship in the sufferings. Yes. Listen, do you have any friends that, that are hang hang on to you even in the midst of a very difficult time? Or do you just have fair weather? But you know they used to say what fair weather friends? Yes. When everything is going fine, everything is hunky dory, baby, okay, yeah, girl, what's up? But when you start having, now they might be with you for a minute, uh -huh. for a minute. Now, when you go through something, girl, I'm so sorry. To, but you be sick too long. <laughs> you keep going through what you've been going through too long. You stay in that hospital too long. Before you know it, the time will pass. And the only people that's going to keep coming are those who really know you who really love you, that's going to come and see about you. That's going to want to know how you're doing. I, I, I may not be able to make it there, but I just want to call you and check on you. That, that's what Paul, Paul said. I, I want to know him like that because I know he's going to check on me every day. He watches. On. Did you know that while you're sleeping, the Lord is looking at you, looking over you? Did you know that while, you ain't even alive to the world when you sleep? That's why death is sometimes symbolized sleep. But do you know when you close your eyes at night and, and you go into that, what's that rim? It's called rim sleep. Uh -huh. that, that deep part of that rim sleep. You don't even know you in the world. You just dreaming and scratching sometimes. Amen. You just dreaming. You don't even know what's going on. And, and, and the Lord can see what's about to happen. Because he loves you so much that he'll, he'll cover you cover you because you know sometimes the enemy try to break in but guess what amen he'll cover you he'll send an angel said not my daughter not my son don't eat don't you even think about it because when she prayed she said lord cover me cover me under the blood because you know him and you know the blood works somebody say the blood still works amen to know him in the power of his resurrection and then he said, being made conformable unto his death. What's that? In other words, when you die to self, when God looks at you, when you gave your life, when you were born again, he sees the son in you now. So you made conformable to his death. When you went in that water, you vicariously died. And when you came up, you were changed. And when you gave your life to the Lord, you were born again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away, behold, all things become new, being made conformable unto his death. And if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Paul said, I want to be so conformable to his death that it's no longer I. It's the Christ that dwells inside within me. Our last scripture, Hebrews. 
I, I, I want the Father, when he sees me, he sees his son. He sees what has been done in and through me. That, what did Paul say? That to live is Christ, to die is gain. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. I'm being transformed. We're like that, that sheep. We die to ourselves every day. Amen. Hebrews 9, let's go over here to the 20, well, this mediator. And he is the mediator between God and man. Let's look at the 14th verse and read down. And for this cause, he's the mediator. John, 1 John 9 says that we have a mediator between God and man. The man, Jesus Christ. Yes. He's the mediator of the New Testament now, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament. In other words, he mediated, he closed out mm -hmm. the old covenant yes. because he fulfilled it. Somebody say, he fulfilled it. He fulfilled it. And they, there, and they which are called might receive. They which are what? Well, y'all the call. Well, y'all the elect of God. You're the chosen of God. Amen. Might receive the promise of what? Eternal inheritance. Why? Because ye, he has been resurrected. You have received the promise of eternal inheritance or eternal life. Some translations say eternal life. For where a testament is, there must also be a necessity. It was necessary for Christ to die. Amen. Because, amen, he is the tester or the maker of the will. But because he fulfilled it all, amen, he paid the full price. He died in full. Your new name, and you do have a new name. You won't find it until we get to glory. But there's a new name in glory, really glory. And then let's look at the 24th verse. For Christ. Because remember, he entered into the heavenlies for us, for us. And see, nobody, the scripture says in Ephesians that he that descended was also he that ascended. Yes. And when he was down there, amen, he took the keys of what? Death, Death, Death. hell, and the grave. He took the sting out of it. But Christ, the 24th verse, is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are figures of the truth, but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God. Guess what? For us. He took the blood that were from the mercy seat. He, yeah, now, now all we have to do is accept what he did. Amen. And give him our, our life. Our names now is written. In, and so he represents us. And so, Father, when we mess up, fess up, repent of your sins, and he'll say, Father, I got, I got her. I got Joyce. I, I got Sarah. I, 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 got, I got him. I got him. And the father, that's right, because what he sees you, he sees his son in you. Amen. Is that good to know? Amen. So you don't have to feel defeated. Don't ever feel defeated. And don't ever feel like you're not going to make it in. Because you did what was expected of you to do. Amen. Amen. Look at 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he have often suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. They didn't believe it. They couldn't understand it. They were doing the law. They were doing uh, offerings and sacrifices and bulls and goats. But Jesus appeared, amen, and said, I'm going to take care of this. And from now on, Amen. They will not have to, a blood of the goats and bullocks will not cover their sins because I got them covered. And as this is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him. Are you looking for him, saints? Yes. Amen. Those who look for him, he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So what did he do? The penalty, the sin, 
the iniquity, the corruption, the wickedness, and anything else you want to throw in that, that pot. He took it all. Amen. Look at somebody say, Jesus took it all. Jesus took it all. Everything. Why? Because he loves you. Amen. And cares about you. Amen. And you're never going to be the same again. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, you did it for us. We couldn't save ourselves. We were guilty of sin in the first degree. And Lord, because of that, there are times that we just couldn't, we, we, we didn't even know many times, Lord, if you heard it, but you, we know that by faith, you said you would hear if we pray. And the hurt of the past, the pain of the past, you carried all of that for us. You washed us in your blood, Lord. You cleansed our mind. When they put the thorn, the crown of thorns on your head, it was for our emotional health, our mental health. And so that we would have peace that surpasses understanding, that would keep in guard our hearts and our minds through Christ, our Savior, our God, and our King. And so, Lord, as we gave ourselves back to you, because you gave, you, we received this new life. We shall never die again. But we shall live. And we shall live with you forever and ever and ever. Because the power of the resurrection and the glory of Christ, our risen Savior. You held us up and you held on to us. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, say it again. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Say it with me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 He's my healer, healer, healer. He's my healer, healer, healer. He's my healer, healer, healer. He's my healer, healer. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for you are my Savior, 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 Savior. Agape love, we love you. We thank God for those who are watching us by stream, saints and friends. Isn't it good to know that he's your healer? He's your Savior. He's your Holy Ghost baptizer. He's everything. So may the Lord bless you this resurrected Sunday. And sing with me one more time. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. We love you and always remember the joy of the Lord is our strip. And, and, and don't forget. On the 19th to the 20th, First. 21st, we will be at Morris Cathedral, Church of God in Christ, 7 o'clock, amen, Lily of the Valley District, 
We got some great preachers coming in from North Carolina, South Carolina. So I definitely want you to come and be with us. And then the Seven. next weekend, Seven. the next weekend, we start our, our, spring, our spring renewal and revival. And our speakers for that, on that, which will be the 28th, or rather the 29th, it's 2.30 in the afternoon on Saturday, will minister Daniel Cotton and Pastor Joshua Honey. We want to invite you and your families, because some of you need to be renewed, and some of you need to be revived. Amen. So be with us. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you till we meet again. Remember always, the joy of the Lord is your strength.